as well as for the last 30 seconds. I will then skip with my finger the number of seconds remaining. If you have not finished your presentation after 24 minutes, you will be stopped in order to proceed with a Q&A period. A Q&A period of a maximum of 4 minutes allocated to the jury at the end of the presentation. The first 12 minutes of the presentation are considered, are considered protected. This means that the team can proceed without worrying about being interrupted by the judges. During the next 10 minutes, the judges uh, have the right to interrupt the presentation to ask questions or of, of clarification <coughs> to the topic at this time. So I will say begin and finish uh, out loud to inform you about the uh, question period. The judge, the, judge, the, the judge should should be limited to the, uh, 15 seconds. The team must answer the question, but can then continue its presentation without waiting for the judge, judge's consent. Judges may not ask questions about a topic that has already been covered or has not yet been presented. This issue will be addressed during the question period at the end of the presentation. The last two minutes of the presentation are to conclude the presentation and are immune to the judge's question. Please note that at any time you cannot say or reference the name of or the location of your university. I will now let the judges introduce themselves. You can start the presentation when they are finished. experience I had with Metro. I walked in and I was looking for this specific product, something that my mom uses for one of her recipes, butter chicken, an ethnic product not commonly found in grocery stores. I was looking through the aisles and I couldn't find this product, so I went to one of the agents working there and he helped me out through my whole experience. He brought me exactly where the product was placed, brought me back to the cash, talked to me, asked me about what I was going to do with this product, check me out and basically sent me away. This was a fantastic experience and that's how Metro went further for me. On the agenda today, we'll be going through the mandate and why we're here. Give you a recommendation of what your strategy, uh, future strategy should be like, an analysis of why we built uh, this strategy, an implementation, and finally, the financials to back this project up. Today, your mandate is as follows. Help Metro differentiate themselves from the competition and a mature grocery market where consumer demands are constantly in change. So we're here today to provide you with a recommendation to help you achieve that mandate, to help you achieve growth in this ever-changing, ever-competitive market. And our recommendation for you is to position yourself in a place that your competitors currently aren't targeting. As you can see from our positioning graph, two main ideas we see in the grocery industry is price and customer experience. Now when we talk about customer experience, we don't mean just walking into the store and how friendly the employees are. We're also talking about how easy it is to find what you're looking for, how easy it is to decide what store you want to go to in the beginning, whether they have the products that you're looking for, and the quality of the products as well. That all encompasses customer experience. So when you look at your competition, you can see that Costco and Target are more focused on lower prices, as well as Walmart. Now the reason we've placed Walmart ahead in customer experience is because we do offer online sales. So a customer can actually purchase something online and have it shipped to their home, which nowadays is a big plus for consumers and it elevates that customer experience. So this is a little bit pricier, but doesn't focus as much on that customer experience, while well, Loblaw sits generally in the middle. So this leaves a gap. That gap up in the upper right quadrant. A gap that Metro is already very well positioned to fill, and you already are. But we're here today to help you see how you can even further fill this gap. Today we're here to help you position yourselves. For the modern day urban consumer, Metro will become the easily accessible grocery store that focuses first and foremost on customer experience, offering the right products. Now the right products, it depends on who the consumer is. And that's why Metro does such a good job because you see, depending on what market is, what products you should be offering. Now you've told us today that you want to be able to create new value drive new growth, 
and generating synergies. And our strategy will accomplish all three of these things. Our strategy will create new value by focusing on customer loyalty. It will be valuable to Metro because you'll have customers continually coming back to your store. You'll be able to retain these customers and continue to grow your profits with these customers. You'll do this through tailored product offerings, making sure that when Phil's mother asks him to go to Metro to pick up that butter and chicken sauce, he will know it's there. He'll know that no matter what, whenever he goes to Metro, the product he's looking for will be there. Next, you want to make sure that you are offering and driving new growth. So this can be done through customer acquisition. And what does this mean? Well, there are two parts to our strategy for the customer acquisition. Number one, the delivery. And number two, accessibility. This will be touched on further in the presentation, but essentially delivery. So being able to really deliver that butter chicken to the consumer, as well as accessibility, making sure that Metro is really in key areas in those new urban developments and making it easy for consumers who, for example, live in condos, who can really go downstairs and have the Metro right across the street. Now, in terms of generating synergy, you want to be customer focused. Mobile application is key, and that's where the industry is leading, and you currently have an application which works perfectly. We just want to tap into that and push it further. Also, always offering quality products that you already have and that you're already doing, using this new platform and this new strategy to build this company and to grow it further. So we've said that we want to position you as a grocer for the modern day urban consumer. But what exactly does that mean? Well, your modern day urban consumer looks like this. He's in an urban density area. Canadians are now moving towards urban downtown cores as opposed to being sprawled uh, suburbanly. And so, most of the population will be in one center, so you're going to have to accommodate these uh, individuals by either opening new stores or just being more accessible to them and uh, doing so as well with this new delivery. Also, lifestyle. Lifestyle is key for this consumer. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, certain lifestyles can be gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, and each of these lifestyles don't only pertain to the food you eat. They also pertain to your lifestyle in general. How is the food that you're buying packaged? How is it sustainable? And these are key things that you should also include in a strategy. Your modern day urban consumer also uses online methods a lot. They go online to determine where they want to shop, what products they want to buy, what products are healthiest or best for them. They also now are going online to buy their products. More and more apps are being developed that actually allow consumers to purchase products from a third party and have them delivered through this app. And so this is something that Metro can focus on to deliver to this customer. Finally, you, you mentioned to us that these consumers are going towards organic products. They want organically grown products. They want ethnic diversified products, such as the butter chicken that I was looking for for my mother. They also want gourmet products. Like you already have in some of your stores, you have a beef aging section, you have a, a fish smoking section. Consumers are looking for these types of products or services added into these metro locations. Next, a major complaint that we found was the cluttered stores and long lines. So we obviously want to make sure that the modern day consumer is being able to avoid these key areas. And finally, with an increasingly large baby boomer population, this means that more and more people aren't mobile. They aren't necessarily willing to leave their homes. And as they continue to age, their need for medication will continue to grow. And since Metro has acquired numerous pharmacies, you'll be able to use this delivery service to deliver prescription medication right to the doors of the baby boomers. Not only that, more and more baby boomers' children will be making purchasing decisions for them. So a baby boomer's child, for instance myself, may decide to buy groceries for my parents once they get to the age of retirement then I could have them delivered directly to their homes without having to go and pick them up themselves or drive them to the grocery store. So all in all, this is your modern day consumer. And by offering delivery, delivery services and online sales, you'll be able to adapt to the new customer demands and you'll be able to differentiate yourselves from your competitors. This will allow you to become not only easily accessible, but also consumer focused. Consumer focus is something you've always been, but we're here to help you take it to the next level. Now let's look at the analysis, what your company looks like right now, what does the industry look like right now, and see how we, what we base this new strategy on. 
So in regards to the industry analysis, there's price and there's product differentiation. In this industry, product differentiation is absolutely key for you to do as a company to really fill that gap that we mentioned earlier. Now looking at an industry analysis, looking at Porter's five forces, first looking at the threat of new, uh, the bargaining power of suppliers. Many of these suppliers, uh, they're smaller, not as big as Metro, Loblaws, Costco, and Walmart. So they have to supply large quantities to yourselves Metro. And so because you have such a big uh, demand, or so you're ordering so much of this, these products, they, 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 most of their sales is based on you, so you're having a controlling interest in this transaction. Looking at the bargaining power of buyers, very high because they're switching costs from you to your, to your competitor or from your competitor to you is very low. They just have to go to the other store and purchase what they need. So uh, in addition, they're very sensitive based on a price as well as quality. So if you decide to raise your prices by X amount, this might uh, push them to another of one of your competitors. And in terms of quality, if you reduce your quality, they might leave as well. So keeping this uh, very stable uh, pricing and quality uh, for your business is key. In terms of the threat of new entrants, as we all know, Metro and Target now offer food in their super centers. They penetrated the grocery market in Canada and were able to do so because they have such large budgets and deep pockets. Uh, we don't see any other uh, big retailers coming into this market today or in the near future because most of them have already uh, come in. And in terms of <coughs> substitution, uh, the threat of substitution is low uh, because people don't necessarily, like people want to buy food, they'll go to the grocery store, they won't necessarily always go eat at restaurants or catering. They'll always go to the grocery store and, and buy, maybe buy different products, but always buying their food at grocery stores and then potentially sometimes in restaurants. And then finally, the threat of competition is very high uh, in this industry. As you've mentioned to us uh, today, these, co these competitions and your competitors are comp uh, competing on price uh, as well as on promotions. You need to build this brand awareness so that customers know that Metro is always there and always will be. This, this ties into <coughs> brand loyalty. You need to keep investing in your brand so that customers always know that you're there for them and that you can still offer the same quality products at the same or similar price. And fi finally, you have uh, product differentiation. You are offering ethnic products, vegan products, gourmet products, and you're doing such a good job, and that's why there's a gap in the market that we showed previously. So all through this industry analysis, we can see that Metro needs to position itself as a grocery retailer who is easily accessible and is offering the right products, the products that your consumers are looking for. Now let's look at the <coughs> company analysis, a SWOT analysis, first looking at Metro's strengths. You currently have a strong financial position. Last year, or this year that just ended, you increased your dividend payout, your EPS, earnings per share, increased, and your sales increased as well. This has been a trend for the past years. Secondly, you are a pioneer in, in, in this market. You, have, you were the first to develop uh, an application. Uh, you were, uh, well, your loyalty cards are first in the market, your app, as I mentioned, and you've created personalized marketing for your consumers. Another one of your strengths is that you are in a sustainable industry uh, growth due to the increasing population we see in Canada, especially moving towards urban centers. Now look at your, looking at your weaknesses, sales growth in the previous years has staggered. They have been growing, but not at the rate that you want them to be growing. And that's why the strategy is key for you in order to increase your sales, increase your growth, and keep moving forward as a company. In terms of a few opportunities we were able to uh, find for you, first, product dif uh, diversification. Always offering new products that the consumers are looking for. 
complementary services such as the app and the delivery services. A, cu a customer can either go in into the, your store and they don't have a vehicle, so they'll need this delivered to their home if it's available. Or they can order it online and have it delivered to their homes uh, by one of your employees. <clears throat> and then there, there's this huge trend of moving online. A lot of your consumers are, have iPhones, tablets, Everyone, almost everyone has computers now. Everyone has internet. Everyone's online looking for information and more and more buying online. And that's why you need to keep moving in this direction. Now finally, a few threats is that there's this increased competition, especially with Walmart and Targeted uh, penetrating this new Canadian market, this Canadian market. And then there's also a market saturation. Uh, this industry is growing year after year only because of population growth. There's not many uh, opportunities that you can geographically uh, diversify. So how will our recommendation help you capitalize on these strengths and opportunities while also mitigating the weaknesses and threats? Metro is in, a financial, is in financial health to pursue a related diversification strategy, which has previous experience in doing. And so by making your grocery store more accessible and by offering the right products, you'll be able to attract new customers and increase your market share. As previously mentioned, today we are here to help you become the modern day, the, grocery, the easily accessible grocery store for the modern day consumer. And you'll do this by focusing first and foremost on the consumer experience by offering the right products, creating new value, driving new growth, and generating synergies. Our strategy today is for you to begin offering online services where consumers can purchase their groceries online and have them delivered to their homes. This service will only be offered at the metros that are owned by the Metro Corporation to begin with. We'll now take you through the implementation of how we're going to make these grocery stores more accessible and deliver the right products. So to go through the implementation today, we have divided it into three categories. The easily accessible part, getting those right products into Metro, and the We Go Further For You marketing campaign. To become easily accessible in the first phase of zero to six months, begin looking at developing and launching an English app. Right now you have your Best Boy Moi app, but you should also develop an English app for your Ontario consumers following the Metro and the Tag app, which is very similar and will fit perfectly. Now this app will be used so that consumers can see what products you have and have the loyalty card as well. All the same features as your French app, so it won't be difficult to develop. Next, it'll look at developing an online ordering system. This will require someone on your IT team to begin developing this system and will require the same competencies as with developing the app. You'll then use this, this website, this ordering website, to put the same features into the app so that consumers can order online through their app as well, those groceries. Finally, identify upcoming urban developments. This will require people on your um, analytics team to see what are the growing trends in the industry. For example, right now in Toronto, there are many new buildings that are going up. Buildings that have 78 stories, 80 stories. And when one of these buildings is built in a region, it actually changes the demographics of that neighborhood. So if you can understand who is living in these buildings and where these buildings are going up, this will help you make the right decisions in terms of where to put your metro locations if you need to open new stores, and also what products to put in those locations. If there's a huge building going up in Chinatown and many, many Chinese immigrants or people who have been in Canada for longer are moving into that building, well, offering Chinese products is something that will help benefit your company. In the medium term, this is when you can launch your ordering system. So after six months, once everything is developed, it's been tested, the bugs are fixed, you can allow people to start ordering on your app or on your website and have the groceries delivered to their homes. This will also require you to train your employees to be able to fill these delivery orders and hire delivery employees. So you'll need some new employees per store with vehicles to be able to deliver the groceries to individuals. When an order is placed, an employee will take a tablet which will purchase and they'll see what products they're ordering. That employee will then go around the store and fill the boxes with, okay, these are the products they're offering. And it'll just be like that person is grocery shopping for someone else. This service will only be offered on sales of over $50. There'll be an $8 charge, and it will only be offered to consumers within a 20 kilometer distance of one of your locations. After the two month implement, two year implementation phase, then you can begin deciding if you want to expand it even further. 
and a 12 month expanding your delivery service to new locations. So this is starting only with the metro owned locations and then after 12 months speaking with some of your franchisees and other family owned metros and seeing if they can begin implementing it as well. And then opening more urban locations near the identified developments that you will identify in phase one of this implementation process. We've talked a lot about this app. This great app is going to allow your consumers to purchase things online. But what is it going to look like? Let me paint a picture for you for what this metro and the app could actually look like. So if we go to the next slide, this is one of the websites. This is what they currently have kind of offered for online sales. But what we want to create for you, Metro, is Metro and Me, the English app. So it could look like this, very interactive. You have photos, for example, you're in the deli category, you choose your product, and the application is for the delivery factor. <coughs> Afterwards, perhaps you want to get that cheddar cheese, and you can see exactly where the product information is, what supplier, what the transparency is, and really bring out the fantastic products you have for Metro, and really make it very clear for the consumer how that will happen. Next is all about choosing the right products. You want to make them easily accessible, but you want to make sure they're the right products, and the consumers are coming to you and staying with you. So to do this in the first phase, purchasing a license for a past system. This is a platform as a service, and it will be something that you can use in all of your stores um, for your ERP so that they can see what products are currently coming in. And I'm sure you already have an ERP system, um, but if you don't already use PASS, it'll be great to use because you have so many franchisees. So it's a cookie cutter approach that you can give to each different location. This will be used to collect data and see um, what the best purchases are coming from different places. If people are searching a lot for a certain ethnic food in a certain region and you don't currently offer it at a local metro, you can collect that information and then consider um, adding that product in that specific metro based on the app searches. Renovating any updated stores to make sure that your stores also have that fresh quality food feeling that your food does. If you're so focused on your food, be focused on your stores as well. And pledging a revenue from your reusable bags to ensure that you are matching that lifestyle of the consumer that Laura mentioned. Your consumers have good health, they care about the environment, so any sales from your reusable bags that cost a dollar, that dollar goes towards um, research and development for reusable packaging, which you already do. In the medium phase, accessing that business intelligent data from your past to make sure that you're making the best business decisions and deciding what product should go where determining these new products to introduce, and then finding the suppliers that will meet these product needs. Because you're such a large company, suppliers would love to come to you, and it'll be easy enough for you to find these suppliers for these specific niche products. In the longer term, you'll need to reduce the less frequently purchased items to make room on your store shelves for these new items that you'll be introducing. And promoting ethnic products in a targeted manner. For example, brochures, posters at community centers and at other community regions in um, ethnic areas, and also making sure that the promotions are in the language of the targeted audience. <coughs> Briefly going through the marketing. So if we go further for you, the marketing campaign that will really connect your brand to all the consumers and really tie our entire strategy in this campaign. So to briefly go over it, essentially you're going to be creating profiles for local farmers, really connecting with the suppliers, putting this in the app, putting this online, a title sponsor for Canadian, a BC network to really make sure that you are connecting with the right consumers, as well an employee contest. You already have a fantastic employee uh, in place and just making sure that they're going further, perhaps if they have exceptional customer service, they're actually getting a trip and quite literally going further, perhaps to Cuba. So <laughs> again, we're going to quickly go over the financials just before I finish. Just because we're short on time, I will just briefly run through this. So in our financials, we've established what it's going to cost for you, how you're going to afford it, and what's going to be your return. So in terms of cost, uh, sales minus cost of blue coal gives you your operating income, which was $781 million last year. Now, looking at uh, operating income minus the capital expenditures you invested into the business, gave you your net income, which means that your, your last year's budget was uh, $325 million. Now to achieve this, our goal, to increase your sales further by 2%, which would bring you to a total of 3.3% the next year and following, uh, you'll need to achieve sales of $11.9 billion, which means that you need to invest, uh, according to previous data, $335 million this year. 
Now this might seem like a lot, but last year you invested 396 million uh, into cash flow operating uh, and uh, projects. So this isn't quite substantially large for yourself. Now two ways we can afford this. You can afford this. Last year you, you uh, issued two types of bonds, Series C or Series D. Those were the cost of debt. And then equity, which we estimate at approximately 15% based on previous data. Now in terms of your return, I projected uh, next year and the following year's sales based on a 2% increase per year. And then the total return is 468 million over two years, bringing you to an ROI of 40%. Our strategy today was to make you the grocery store for the modern day urban consumer. The easily accessible grocery store that's customer focused, focused on the right products. Metro, we know you can do it and we know that you'll become a leader in this space. Thank you. Thank you. 